Our next speaker is a Zabbix certified professional. And our next topic is really interesting and really useful for everyone with a large scale environment that they plan on maybe scaling up in the future or where redundancy is key. So our next topic is minimizing monitoring downtime, how to build a Zabbix HA cluster. And as I said, our next speaker is a Zabbix certified professional from Japan, Chief Engineer at SRA OSS Inc. Japan. Let's welcome Toshihiro Akamatsu. Thank you for participating in this session today. I'm Toshio Akamatsu from SRA OSS in Japan. This session, Reminding Monitoring Downtime, How to Build the Big Stage Cluster, will show HA Cluster Outline and How to Build the Big Stage Cluster. What should we do to minimize monitoring downtime? In preparation, the Zabbix system is down. One of the solutions is building a Zabbix HA cluster. To build Zabbix HA cluster, actually, you need to know HA cluster architecture and construction method. Cluster configurations are generally classified into active active cluster and active-passive cluster. In active-active cluster, multiple and individual Zabbix servers run concurrently, and each Zabbix server monitors the same object. If one Zabbix server is down, active-active cluster can continue monitoring by other servers. In an active passive cluster, you build multiple Zabbix servers, but only one server runs among multiple Zabbix servers. If a running Zabbix server is down, a failover occurs and another server starts by a cluster software. As a result, monitoring is continued, but interrupted momentarily during failover. Then first, let's look at the active-active cluster. As I said earlier, in active-active cluster, multiple and individual Zabbix servers run concurrently, and each Zabbix server monitors the same object. If one Zabbix server is down, Monitoring can be continued by other servers. In an active active cluster, only notification belonging to a primary server should be enabled to prevent redundant notifications. There are some considerations in building active active cluster. Firstly, how to sync monitoring configuration. Active active cluster includes multiple and individual Zabbix servers. So you should sync monitoring configuration of each server. In addition, a way to disable other servers' notification is needed with synchronizing configuration. One more thing is how to switch a secondary server to a primary server when the primary server is down. In case of switching secondary to primary, you should prepare a method to enable configuration sync and notifications on the secondary server. You can synchronize configurations manually, of course, but it is better to do it automatically one of possible solution is replicating only monitoring configuration table in the database. But it is difficult to disable notification of replication destination. So you can think of dumping only monitoring configuration tables from the primary database 
and disabling notification in that in data and restoring to other other databases. However, in this case, you must not update configuration except the primary server. And you must stop secondary or thirdly damaged servers when you restore it. Another consideration is how to enable notifications when switching secondary server to primary server. In order to enable notification at once, you can create an execute script using Zabbix API or SQL, for instance. Pros and cons of active active cluster is summarized as follows. As pros, simple system construction method and continuous monitoring when primary is done with no interrupts. As cons, System load of monitored object becomes higher than active passive cluster because all Zabbix servers monitor the same object. And you should consider configuration synchronization and switching methods secondary to primary too. Next is active passive cluster. In active passive cluster, you build multiple Zabbix servers and only one of them run. Monitored objects are monitored by a floating IP address and database is shared with all servers. If a running Zabbix server is failed, Zabbix server is fell over to another node by a cluster software, and monitoring is continued. What matter here is database redundancy. Database redundant methods are roughly classified into three types. First, using shared storage. Second, using database replication. Third, using block device replication. Then let's look at the method of using shared storage. With this method, you put database files on shared storage and mount the storage to another server on failover. Pros of this method are no, no data sync overhead, and rapid failover. Cons are that specific devices required, and you should consider shared storage redundancy, because it becomes single point of fail. Next is the DB replication method. With this method, making database redundancy by a database replication feature. This method can fail over re relatively rapidly and complete redundancy only using database features. But high technical cost and replication overhead are required. Thus is a block database replication method. With this method, database files are replicated with block devices. Pros of this method are simple architecture and low monetary cost. Cons are taking time to fail over and increasing trade size by a number of Zabbix servers. There are considerations in building active passive cluster too. Firstly, how to prevent split brain syndrome. Split brain syndrome means that the system is divided by hardware failure or interconnection failure. 
and the service starts on multiple nodes in the cluster. As a result, service stops. If split brain syndrome occurs, there is a risk that the database is broken by conflict. Watchdog and Stony shoot the other node in the head can be considered as prevention of split brain syndrome. Secondly, if you want to monitor log files on Dalek server or monitor SNMP traps, you must put those files on shared storage or replicated probe devices. Otherwise, file reread may occur after fail off, according to the Dalek log file monitoring specification. Lastly, I will show the example of Dalek's active passive cluster construction method. In this example, I will build a two node cluster. OS is CentOS 8. Dalek's version is 5.0.4. And database is PostgreSQL. Nginx and PHP FPM are used as web server software, and cluster software are Pacemaker and CoreSync. DRBB is a software for block device replication. Firstly, you install Zavix as it says in the official documentation, and disable automatic start of that server, because it is managed by cluster software, and source IP of that server is set to a floating IP address. Next, install Nginx and PHP FPA, and disable automatic start of them. Set server name of Nginx to floating IP address and set time zone of PHP FPM. Next, install Pacemaker and Corsync from high availability repository. Start and enable a cluster management tool, PCSD. Set host name and IP address of each node in X host file on both nodes. Set password of cluster management user HA cluster and authorize host node as cluster node. Then set up a cluster named Zavix cluster with authorized nodes. Next, start and enable the cluster. In this example, not consider split brain syndrome, so disable stone it and set quorum policy to ignore. The pacemaker and crossing basic setup is now complete. Confirm that cluster status is OK by PCS cluster status command. Next, install Block Device Replication Software, DRBD. DRBD can be installed from Enterprise Linux Repository, EL Repo. Set up DRBD resources. Disk name, device name, and node information are set here. Next, Create DRBD metadata and start DRBD. DRBD status is inconsistent at this point because synchronization has not yet been done. Run DRBD add primary post command on either server, then synchronization starts. Synchronization is complete if status becomes up to date. 
setback primary to secondary by DRBD Adam secondary command. Next, make a file system and mount point. If you mount DRBD, the device becomes primary automatically in DRBD version 9. Because automatic promotion feature is enabled by default. Next, install PostgreSQL and make a directory for database on file system managed by DRBD. Then initialize the directory as the data directory of the database and make the database as usual. Lastly, set up resources that are managed by cluster software. If a resource fails, cluster software automatically fell over it and the resource starts another node. Firstly, set up a file system resource that manages the amount of file system and PostgreSQL resource and group them into DB group. Next, set up floating IP address resource. Nginx resource and PHP FPM resource. They are grouped into a DAVIX group. Lastly, set up DAVIX server resource. It is also grouped into a DAVIX group. Now, all required resources are set up. File system and PostgreSQL are grouped into DB group. Floating IP address, Nginx, PHP, FPM, and Zabbix server are grouped into Zabbix group. These groups are used to set constraint. First, set a collocation constraint. If you set a coefficient constraint between DB group and Zabbix group, resources included in the two groups run on the same node. Next, set folder constraints. They are constraints to decide resource start and stop folders. These resources should start in the order of file system PostgreSQL, and other resources. You can confirm resources. You can confirm resource status by PCS status command. If all resources start on same node, it is okay. You can also confirm constraints by a PCS constraint list command. Lastly, confirm to execute failover. Enter Zabbix server 01 in standby state by PCS node standby command. Then failover is executed and start all resources of Zabbix server 02 automatically. This is an example of active passive cluster setting using pacemaker, crossing, and DRBD. For more information, please refer to following URLs. In this session, I have introduced how to build DAVIX AJ cluster. Thank you for your attention. As I've said before, HA is quite often a huge requirement for our potential customers, community members, and so on. It was really great to hear a live use case of how this can be implemented. So thank you.